Let's now look at question number four of the English language paper one exam. This is the question where we're always told a student having read this said, or somebody having read this said whatever they've said. For this question, I would suggest always remember to allocate 20 minutes to this part of the paper before you move on. Let's now examine question four. This is the question which always gives us a statement from a student. If you recall, the statement for this particular question is, the student said, this part of the story where the men encounter the Tyrannosaurus Rex shows Eccles' right to panic. The monster is terrifying. Now, you're asked to what extent do you agree? I would say for question number four, usually you always agree, okay? Usually they don't give you a statement that's completely inaccurate or just completely crazy where you have to now make an argument. This is not a history essay, okay? So history, you have to balance perspectives, okay? Even in religious studies, you have to balance perspectives. But in this case, just always agree for question number four, okay? When you get the student statement. And here, we can agree that actually when the men do meet the Tyrannosaurus Rex from lines 31 to the end, Eccles is right to panic. It is really terrifying the way this monster is portrayed, right? So now what I would do, because of course we've already highlighted the keywords, okay, our own impressions of Eccles reactions to the T-Rex, evaluate how the writer describes the monster. I would now go back to the insert, okay? And I would go back to the specific part of the passage, which I'm being asked to look at, okay? From line 31 to the end, which is basically just this entire page. What I would suggest to not do is don't use any of the evidence you've already used. If you remember, in question three, we have used this is impossible, as well as the rifles, okay? And the final bit. So I would suggest don't recycle these points because it's gonna be seen as a little bit lazy by your examiner. Going back to question number four, in terms of timing, because this is worth 20 marks, you want to spend 20 minutes on this question. You need to write an introduction, very brief introduction, using a bit of the question to begin your answer, saying that, you know, the writer uses a mix of language and structure devices to support the student's statement. Then write four peel paragraphs and a conclusion. If you find that you're running out of time, three peel paragraphs can also be good, okay? However, the whole point of this lesson is that to show you how to structure this and then what I would suggest is try to practice as much as you can. The, fast, the more you practice, the faster you get. And the faster you get, the quicker it becomes to write each pill paragraph and it becomes more realistic to do four pill paragraphs plus intro and conclusion within the time. Conclusion is simply just restating and just reusing and recycling the words from the question, okay? Now, with the introduction, you're not introducing any bits from the passage, okay? We're not gonna use that in our introduction. However, what I would suggest is before you dive into answering the question, pick out the four things you're gonna talk about in your point, okay? This idea that Eccles is right to panic and the monster is terrifying. There's two elements of that. You can focus on uh, some of your peel paragraphs talking about why Eccles is right to panic, but then of course, some of your peel paragraphs can also relate to how the monster is terrifying. A little bit kind of like the paragraphs you did for question number two, where the monster, how is it portrayed, all right? So I would make it a balance of language and structure points, okay? Remember, language is words, things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, similes, metaphors, and so on. Structure is sentence types, interesting punctuation, repetition, you know, uh, beginning, middle, and end, okay? All that is structure. So let's go back to this, okay? How the evidence, I'm gonna pick out the evidence where I'm thinking about the impressions of Eccles, um, and I will really mainly, to be honest, focus on just the highlighted bits, okay? So the first bit I would suggest is, I'll skip when Tr uh, Travis tells him to shut up because that doesn't necessarily support the idea that Eccles is right to panic. In fact, actually Travis is punishing him, okay? Now, here, perhaps the, the way the uh, Tyrannosaurus is portrayed as a tyrant lizard, almost like an overgrown lizard, that does show that the monster is quite terrifying. So I would probably select that. And this really powerful simile, yeah, so tyrant lizard, uh, so the lizard is, is uh, this is a metaphor. And of course, also the adjective armored, yeah? So what this adjective does is it shows just how well protected uh, this monster is and this creature. And then um, I would also actually pick this simple sentence out as well, okay? So that's a structural point. So simple sentence. And of course, this is just showing how this is creating a lot of uh, buildup, the way it breathes out. And it's almost like this wave of smell and it's a stench because it stinks like raw flesh, okay? So I'll probably use these two for the uh, creature, okay? So I'll pick this for one point and then this for another probably. And then uh, here where Eccles is speaking, he uses rule of three. Good guides, good, safar uh, good safaris, good safety, okay? So this is rule of three. Showing he's panicked. 
And I would say, actually, to be honest, I do feel like he has lost faith in Travis, his guide, because Travis doesn't is disregarding how he feels, okay? So he is kind of right to panic because his fears are being ignored. And we can see that he feels a great deal of uncertainty seeing this creature, all right? All right, so I'll probably select that. And then also I might uh, kind of skip a few lines and going to here where the monster is described, but also even the way Eccles takes a few steps back, blinking, shuffling, okay? Now here, the listing of these verbs. So this is a listing, especially that's a structural technique. And of course, this sentence is a complex sentence. All right. And again, here, this shows that Eccles is panicking and he's right to panic. Okay. He literally, he feels like their life isn't a great deal of danger. Now I'm going to see if there's any interesting element, which I haven't used. Okay. So here, perhaps, uh, the idea that it was going to crush them like berries, okay? Showing just how tiny they are. Again, this is an interesting simile. All of these elements, we don't have to use all of them, okay? However, it's always good to try to uh, pick out interesting elements that you can then use as you're writing. And actually, just slightly above here, I'd forgotten to highlight this interesting simile describing the rifles, how minuscule, how tiny the rifles look in contrast to this great big reptile, okay? They're literally overpowered. And the final thing perhaps is this idea that uh, it's, it's constantly, the repetition of also the word lizard, okay? So lizard is repeated as well, okay? so. There's lots you can use here. You've got the simile like a toy gun. You have the simile like a thousand green coins, adjective armored, the metaphor tyrant lizard. It excelled as a simple sentence, rule of three here. We've got uh, the complex sentence here, as well as the repetition of the word lizard and simile, lots and lots to use, okay? So now I've selected all my bits of evidence. What I'm gonna do is write out my introduction. So I'm gonna begin by writing out the introduction and then afterwards I'm gonna walk you through how to write the introduction. And it's really, really simple. Use a bit of the question, affirm and assert that you do agree with the statement and then dive straight into it, okay? Right, so let's quickly go over my introduction. I'm going to use elements from the student statement. You're going to see, okay, to help and then basically use words from the student statement, say that the writer has effectively used language and structure techniques to do so, and then just basically say that and try to write in third person rather, rather than I say, I agree, we can agree, or it can uh, be accepted and so on, okay? So let's read through the introduction really quickly. This part of the story which reaches a dramatic climax does indeed show that Eccles is right to panic. So I'm highlighting this idea that Eccles is right to panic. I am showing that I already agree indirectly, okay? The writer has effectively used a range of language and structure techniques, so I'm highlighting that I'm gonna talk about these, to portray the monster as terrifying, linking it back to the student statement, and it can be accepted that Eccles is right to panic. So I'm gonna read the introduction one last time. This part of the story which reaches a dramatic climax does indeed show that Eccles is right to panic. The writer has effectively used a range of language and structure techniques to portray the monster as terrifying, and it can be accepted that Eccles is right to panic. So that's my introduction. I've basically borrowed language from the student. I've said that I agree, but in an indirect way, okay? Try to avoid using I and first person perspective. Always say it can be accepted because you're including yourself in that um, ac acceptance, okay? Um, it, this, this story does indeed show this. That's your way of saying, yep, I agree, okay? So that's really it for the introduction. As I mentioned, you then want to write four pill paragraphs, okay? So I'm gonna begin my first pill paragraph and I'm actually gonna begin with this simile, all right? So my first pill paragraph is gonna be to do with this language technique and this language device, all right? So I'm gonna write out my first pill paragraph and then I'll walk you through it afterwards. Right, let's go over my first Peel paragraph. Remember, Peel is point, evidence, explanation, and link. Now, I'm going to begin by reading through the point. Firstly, we realize that Eccles is right to panic when they encounter the Tyrannosaurus Rex, brackets T-Rex, as Eccles realizes just how 
gargantuan it is in contrast to the men. So here, as you can see, I've used elements from the question to show and to highlight to the examiner that I'm answering the question. I've also stated Tyrannosaurus Rex in full, but then I've put it in brackets. Usually I don't suggest using brackets all the time. However, if you have a long sentence or a long word like this, of course, put it in brackets. Uh, first spelling it out, always make sure you spell it out once, then put it in brackets to highlight to the examiner, okay, this is quite long, I'm gonna put it in brackets and then shorten it, okay? And then you can use the abbreviation. Go back to this, as you can see, I've then stated that, you know, this T-Rex is really gargantuan in contrast to the men, okay? So obviously here, I'm supporting this idea that Eccles is right to panic and the monster is huge in comparison to them. So that's the point, let's look at the evidence. Eccles's gun seems like an inadequate plaything as it looks like a toy gun in his hands. Okay, so this is my evidence. Eccles's gun seems like an inadequate, like a useless plaything, like a, something he uses as a game, as it looks, speech marks, like a toy gun, close speech marks in his hands. So I've used the simile from the insert, okay? Now, that's my evidence, and as you can see within my evidence, I've embedded my quotation, meaning if we took out the speech marks, it still flows as part of this statement, okay? So this is my evidence. Now, let's look at the explanation. The writer successfully uses this simile to show just how minuscule, how tiny the men are, and how pointless the guns seem. The adjective toy adds a sense of dark humor. As we can see, Eccles feels powerless to defend himself against the monster. So that's my explanation. I've talked about simile, language technique, and I've also done some word level analysis talking about the adjective and then highlighting the toy element, okay? Then I've said uh, and I've explained why Eccles is right to panic. Now let's look at my link back to the question. Hence, Eccles is right to panic because the monster is depicted as gigantic and terrifying. Its sheer size will protect it against the guns' minute bullets. Minute, and again, another small, uh, another synonym for small, okay? Here, as you can see, hopefully you can see I'm using ambitious vocabulary. That's really important, okay? Make sure you use advanced ambitious vocabulary in your writing. So as you can see here, I've linked it back to the question, the idea within the keywords of the question that Eccles is right to panic, okay? So this idea of panicking and the monster is gigantic and terrifying, okay? Linking it back to the student's statement, all right? So that's my first pill paragraph and I've made a language point okay so I still have three more pill paragraphs I need to make just one other language point but then also balance it off with the structure points before I conclude so I'm going to write out my second pill paragraph and then walk you through it afterwards Now, in terms of this second pill paragraph, as you can see with the first point, I started off with firstly, therefore it's always good to always start off your paragraphs with firstly, secondly, thirdly, and fourthly, okay? So I'm gonna read through the opening pill point, okay? So this is my point. Secondly, the extra reveals just how terrifying the T-Rex is as it is depicted as monstrous and menacing and its defenses outweigh the men, okay? So here, this is the second reason I give, showing that the Tyrannosaurus is way better defended than these men, okay? So that's my second opening point, highlighting and supporting the idea that Eccles is right to panic. Let's look at my evidence. The tyrant lizard had armored flesh as it approached them, it excelled, okay? So here, I've got three separate bits of evidence. So we've got tyrant lizard, that's my first bit, armored flesh, that's my second bit, and then the full simple sentence, it excelled, okay? And I'm showing how it's approaching them. So as you can see here, I've embedded my quotation. Let's look at the explanation. The author's use of the metaphor, tyrant lizard, coupled with the simple sentence, it excelled, illustrates just how intimidating and petrifying the monster is. It also seems indestructible, as the adjective armored reveals that it is well protected and its skin is impenetrable, okay? So, as you can see here in my explanation, I've actually coupled a language point, which is to do with the metaphor, with a structure point, which is simple sentence, okay? To make sure that I've got both my language and structure covered. But equally, I've done some word level analysis here, talking about the adjective and talking about how Eccles is right to panic because the monster literally looks like it's so well protected and it's like really scary, right? So that's my explanation. Now let's look at the link back to the question. Therefore, Eccles is right to panic as the monster approaches them in an intimidating manner as it breathes in them. 
Moreover, its skin seems hard and difficult to slice through. Thus, the guns are a poor match against the monster. So now here, I've linked it back to the question, this idea that the monster is terrifying. It literally is totally outweighing them physically, literally physically outweighing them, right? So the men are totally outmatched. Um, and these guns, literally, they can't get through the skin, okay? So again, once more, this full paragraph supports the points and I'm still using keywords from the question, all right? And also bear in mind that whilst my first pill paragraph looked at language, this one has both language and structure. So now I've got another language point, but also most importantly, I've also added a structure point. So I'm going to move on to the third pill paragraph. Again, I'm going to write it out and then walk you through it afterwards. Right, so let's look at my third peel paragraph, okay? Again, starting off with my point. Thirdly, Eccles seems extremely petrified and his fears are not eased by his tour guide. Travis dismisses his panic, which makes him feel little faith in the tour guide company. Thus, we can see his right to panic as a good tour guide would have eased his fears. That's my opening point, okay? So I'm saying that Literally, even the way that Travis, the tour guide, treated them, it seems like, you know, he just doesn't really care. And actually, a really tall, good tour guide company would have eased them. Guys, we have, you know, don't worry, don't worry, this monster, we know how to do it, okay? And Eccles, therefore, is right to panic, okay? So that's the point I'm making. Now, let's look at my evidence. Eccles says that in previous trips, he had good guides, good safaris and safety. Yet Travis had dismissed him already by telling him to shut up. Now here, my evidence, as you can see, I've got his, uh, what Eccles says, so speech marks, good guides, good safaris and safety, but also I've juxtaposed it with slightly earlier when Travis has told him, and I've put the quote, to shut up, okay? So that is my evidence, and as you can see again, I have embedded my quotations. Now let's look at my explanation. The rule of three when Eccles refers to guides, safaris and safety show he is right to panic as his tour guide on this trip underestimated, underestimated the threat of this T-Rex. The alliteration in good guides reveal Eccles is upset that his tour guide does not even try to reassure him. So here, as you can see, I've restated the quotations, guides, safaris, and safety, but also are focused in on alliteration, which is good guides, okay? And again, I'm explaining why Eccles is right to panic. You know, maybe uh, Travis is underestimating this threat, okay? So that's the explanation. And let's look at how I link it back to the question. Hence, Eccles is right to panic as it seems his tour guide, Travis, is incredibly dismissive of the threat the monster poses. Eccles does not feel like this safari company accurately judged him, judge this threat, and he's right to feel petrified. So here I've linked it back to the question why Eccles is right and why he's justified in panicking, whether they're going to get out of this alive. Maybe Travis is underestimating this threat. So as you can see here in my third pill paragraph, I made a mainly language point. Okay, I've talked about alliteration, I've talked about root of three. Therefore, my final pill paragraph will have to be about structure. Again, I'm going to write it out and then walk you through it afterwards. Right, so let's look at my final pill paragraph. And as you can see here, I've got my trusty notepad because I have overgone the space, okay? There's no more writing. So of course, if you write more than the pages um, which are available, literally all you just need to do is raise your hand and then you're always gonna be given extra paper. So let's start by looking at my point. Finally, we can see that Eccles is right to panic as the monster seems terrifying. The T-Rex is described as excessively gigantic and it seems like it can easily crush the men in one fell swoop. So here in my point, I'm basically saying that the T-Rex is huge and it can easily kill, it can crush these men. So that's the point that I'm making. And of course, again, here I'm talking about how it's uh, Eccles' right to panic, the monster is terrifying. I keep on restating the keywords in the question. I'm showing the examiner that I'm answering. So now let's look at my evidence. We learned that speech marks, the monster twitched, ellipsis, to fondle at the men, ellipsis, 
to crush them like berries ellipsis okay so i have condensed this really long sentence here okay so this is between line 61 61 to 63 i've condensed that or even 62 even but i've condensed that and used ellipsis a lot okay so i've embedded my quotation now let's look at my explanation the author uses this complex sentence to portray just how ravenously hungry the t-rex is and how easily it can eat the men the noun berries shows how tiny and delicious the men look in the monster's eyes we can see that in contrast to the men the t-rex is humongous and it can easily kill the men okay so that's my explanation i've talked about complex sentence a structure point but also i have made a little language point talking about the noun berries showing how just yummy and delectable these men look in the monster's eyes and of course i'm still contrasting how huge this creature is in contrast to these little tiny men okay now here's my link Therefore, Eccles is right to panic, as not only is the monster huge, but it is hungry. Hence, it can easily overpower and devour the men. Eat, devour, okay? So that's the link back to the question. And that's my fourth and final pill paragraph, but I'm not done because there needs to be a conclusion, okay? So if you remember, we had the introduction here, okay? So you wanna always open the point, the, the uh, essay really well okay so this information but then to be honest your conclusion can literally just borrow from the introduction okay so if you remember open with a brief introduction restating the keywords in the question and so on and then conclusion just literally use the same language not word for word but similar language for your conclusion okay so again i'm going to write my conclusion and then walk you through it Right, so let's read through the conclusion. In conclusion, it is clear that when the men meet the monster, Eccles is right to panic. The T-Rex is large, menacing and threatening, and the men's guns seem inadequate to deal with it. The author has effectively used a range of language and structure techniques to show that Eccles is right to panic as the monster is terrifying. As you can see here in my conclusion of recycled these keywords okay because i'm showing the examiner always that i'm answering the question i understand what i need to do and i'm mentioning this idea that echoes right to panic the monster is terrifying and hopefully you can also spot from both the introduction and conclusion i've never at any point said i think this i agree i have indirectly agreed i've indirectly stated that yes we can agree this okay so remember that if you say you know it is indeed um, evident that you know and then you support it echoes is right to panic that's another way of saying yes i agree okay so you don't have to always say i in fact it's a bit more of a sophisticated way of agreeing a sophisticated way of writing when you try not to use first person instead of saying i think this i agree do it indirectly okay so that's really it when it comes to question number four remember you want to start with an introduction you want to write four pill paragraphs and then a conclusion but to be honest the conclusion and the introduction you're not adding any evidence from the intro conclusion you're just briefly summarizing it you can borrow language from both and really that's it and of course try to make sure you do this within 20 minutes remember practice makes perfect so the more you practice these questions the quicker you become and the easier this becomes all right so that's it and thank you so much for listening